back, everybody. Uh, perhaps we should get started. And I've just seen that we've been joined by our, our keynote um, from Ireland, Oshin. So um, welcome, very warm welcome, Oshin. Um, it's fantastic to have you here. We're very much looking forward to your keynote very soon. Um, we are going to just spend some time uh, for the next um, 10 minutes or so, uh, quarter of an hour or so, and then we'll, we'll have a short break before your keynote. Um, just to uh, report back from uh, the, the sessions that we've just had, to have an opportunity to share some of the discussion that took place. Um, we had a staff session and a student session, and we were looking at um, or considering the same series of questions in each session. So, and we did capture um, uh, some of the themes through the Padlet, but really this session is to invite Alison, Kate and Elisa um, from the staff session and Alex from the student session to share the themes of the discussions that took place in, in their part of the Zoom world. Shall I go first? Wonderful, thank you, Alison. Um, I'm sure I'll, Alex will be fine with that. Um, I'll just start with a couple of reflections that we had as we, um, and it's a little bit from the Padlet and a little bit from our discussion. Um, we talked about, you know, some of the challenges in doing this work, which can be seen as um, quite disruptive and in, in fact is probably designed to be that way, um, to move beyond just the consultation with students once we've designed something or made a decision or, you know, just, you know, reading feedback and then, you know, trying to close the loop on that. It's about really moving up Arnstein's ladder and getting to the, the genuine partnership stage where we're working um, as equal informed partners from our, our unique perspectives. And to do that, you know, it, it really takes cultural change. Um, we, we have our champions here um, who do a lot of this work and we talk a lot about the challenges and how to overcome them. And um, one of the great reflections that we had in the session was that we know that there are challenges. It, it is, it can be messy. Um, it, Things cannot work. We can sometimes make mistakes. You know, it's it's hard to make this sustainable when there are big changes that happen in the university, or indeed, you know, some of our champions move on either from the staff or student space. So um, that in itself uh, is something that we can plan for and and try to create um, you know strategies and um, processes and systems to to anticipate those challenges. But there's always going to be new challenges. I mean, I don't have to tell you guys what 2020 brought for all of us. So that when we're thinking about um, the challenges, what works and the benefits for this are the things that really drive us as staff, that we're very, very you know, passionate about this space. And I'm passionate about listening to students. So trust was another thing that came out quite strongly, um, ensuring that you do that cultural piece around um, ensuring you've got shared values um, and that you talk about those things because you know you can plan and have strategies and systems in place but if we don't have um, that shared culture of partnership and genuine partnership um, no one's going to be listening to each other so that's a, a general kind of summary statement um, is that is that okay? Alex, did, did you wanna chime in from the student side of things? We're very interested to hear. Um, thanks for that, Alison. Yeah, we, um, we had similar discussions. Um, it, it was great to kind of, we had a pretty small group, so we uh, didn't end up using Padlet all that much, although uh, Piper, I'll, I'll add in some of these notes later, so we have that copy. Um, but we just all just kind of had a great chat and gave some uh, gave some examples from our own institutions. Um, so for example, one of the biggest challenges, uh, and you just touched on this a little bit, Allison, was mistrust, uh, mutual mistrust um, identified between both uh, senior academic staff as well as student groups. So it's a bit on both sides. You have senior groups that students may think are acting against their best interest, and you have management that may think the student group could hurt the reputation of the organization. Um, 
I know we, we uh, spent quite a bit of time on looking at what all the benefits are, though, of having students involved in, in the representation. Um, as we've seen in the presentations today, there's, there's quite a few. Um, some came to mind. It, it's a really great learning example for the institution. So you, the one thing you really want to focus on is what students like and what they dislike. And being able to understand that is going to drive student engagement at your organization. So that could be how our courses run, how are social events delivered, um, how would you as a student like to receive announcements and this information. Um, so that, that was a big theme that we identified at multiple institutions. Uh, for strategies and practices that are working, um, one of the big ones was student elected committees and boards, um, more resources available for these student run groups um, because we've all seen the positive change that these groups can can provide um, i spoke briefly about the post uh, postgrad student association i'm a member of and um, although i didn't say it i'm also i was also thinking about the sva group and um and how that how that's worked how our little working group allison has worked and what we've been able to do for the university in, in such a short time uh, finally, where do we want to see this in the future? Um, we want to reevaluate what's worked this year, maybe build off of what worked from 2020 as well, given that uh, COVID was such a substantial change that affected everybody and it's still affecting us today. Um, but we also want to look at sustainability and we're going to be talking a little bit about that on Thursday, but um, Felix brought up a great, great discussion about uh, Student Voice Australia sustainability and the trouble with uh, high turnover in the group and you worry about losing that knowledge, those champions, that passion, uh, the work that's been done, the relationships that have been forged. And um, honestly, I couldn't have said it better myself, Felix, that was a great point you made. Um, and it's something I've been thinking a little bit about myself being that I'll graduate either early this year or early next year or later this year or early next year. And um, I think it's I think it's something that we should all uh, very seriously consider is how can we ensure that that same drive that you see in one year is going to carry over to your new students and your new staff because it's important that you have staff at the university who are also there to help guide um, the volunteers like myself. Uh, so basically, Allison, you're never allowed to leave uh, because I worry about what's going to happen when myself and the others graduate. And then there's a new flock you're going to have to, uh, to educate and inspire. Uh, anyway, that so that that kind of wraps up the discussion. We had a great discussion. Um, if there's anything else that I've missed, um, I'll, if anyone wants to shoot me a message, I'll be happy to raise my voice again. But I just want to thank everybody again. That was a great session, and I'll pass it along. Thank you so much, um, Alex, and also Alison. Um, Wow, um, that was a, that was a, a lot to cover from a from a short session, which is great, and really identifying, I think, some key issues. Can I bring Kate and Alyssa in in to the to the discussion? Um, shall I go first, Kate? Um, so the things that came up for me it was interesting. The conversations that I was having in our small group were the um, sort of the micro practices, but also the issues around governance and. I guess the big takeaways for me are just the importance of that university level leadership and having a really clear strategy around student leadership um, and a coordinated effort because there are a lot of things that can happen in lots of fragmented ways across the university but um, there's not a lot of coordination and there's probably a lot of duplication of resourcing mm. so um, so they're, they're the big takeaways for me is just having that kind of coordinated strategic level approach to student leadership and then really focusing in on how we support students and how we support staff because the power relation issue is um, really difficult um, and then sustainability so um, I think thinking about how we embed this in structures and processes so that it just becomes part of the culture of the university it's part of what we do on a day-to-day -day basis and I think you know we've got I feel like we've got a long way to go before that might be the case Mm -hmm. um, and then things around representation. So representation of more than just 
the most engaged students, for example, perhaps the time poor students, equity students, how do we engage people in this space who um, may not see that they belong there, may not feel they belong there. So they're, they're some of the things for me. Thank you. That's that's really thank you, Elisa. That that's that's great. It, it kind of reminds me as well of one of the topics that we discussed in in the small group I was in, which was, I guess, around um, shared purpose, shared purpose, really, um, and real clarity of purpose. And we talked a little bit, I think, about you know the the, the passion maybe there, and and lots of as you say, um, different initiatives, activities maybe also a coordinating framework, but actually for, um, I, I really identify with this issue of shared purpose because of um, the experience from last year. I think, um, Alex, you, you mentioned that you talked about, you know, the, 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 what we learned from 2020 and building on that. And I think there's probably more work we can do, perhaps as a network to really dig into that question. What did we learn in, in 2020 that as a net you know as institutions i think we're taking this forward maybe as a as a network what we can can we learn from our uh our um dis distributed experiences of 2021 i think for us was this extraordinary galvanizing of um commitment to a student partnership and student voice approach within that context of of a kind of heightened center sense of shared purpose a real clarity of what we needed to do and why. And um, there's, there's something there for me in, in all of that. Um, uh, Alyssa, uh, sorry, Kate, um, would you like to comment? I don't wanna to comment too much because I'm actually really keen to hear if there's some more students that wanna contribute. So I'd like to give some time to hear from another student maybe that participated in that conversation. I can't see people in the room so I can't see oh, great and I can't see people in the room either um, yeah. so if anyone would like to speak up that'd be great I mean I think all I would add is that we need to genuinely like genuinely val valuing what students have to offer and what students contribute and their um, real very real expertise is really important as well um, and thinking about how we actually show appreciation or, or reward or recognize students participating beyond um, maybe certificates and recognition of extracurricular yeah. activity and things like that. Um, I think we have to get really serious about that if we wanna make sure that students um, are equals and are participating, uh, we get that wider participation. That, so they were some thoughts that we had in our group, but um, yeah, is there a student? I'd love to hear from someone, sorry, I can't name anyone on my screen. You could always take a, a question or a comment through the Q&A. Um, so students who'd like to, to comment in response to, to Kate, if you, if you want to uh, do that through the Q&A, because we're in a webinar, so we can't do it. Um, yeah, if, they want to, if they want to put up their hands, we can promote them so they can talk. So if there is a student who'd like to be visible, right. and speak, we should be able to do it, I think. Okay. But we just need to put their hand up using the raise hand function. Don't, don't be shy. I'm, the whole point of us being in this room is really to hear from you guys. So yeah. we'd love to hear some more. I can't see anything coming up at the moment. Maybe it's, um, it's, it's just a natural time um, to draw this session to a close. Um, we, we do have a scheduled break. Um, for 10 minutes before we welcome Oshin and, and his keynote um, and engage with, with Oshin and the work that, that he's taking forward in Ireland. Um, everybody, thanks so much for your input into that session. Um, it seems to me to have generated some very clear thinking um, and some clear themes for Student Voice Australia to be um, engaging with. Um, as we go forward. So, and I'm really glad that we've captured that in not only on the Padlet, but in this fantastic visual um, that, we, that we've got on our screens at the moment. Thank you, Rachel, for that. It's brilliant. Um, let's take uh, 10 minutes and we will reconvene in 10 minutes for um, Oshin's keynote. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>